This past August, OSHA, the Food and Drug Administration, the Environmental Protection Agency, and the Consumer Product Safety Commission announced they would work together to fight health and safety hazards. On September 9, 1977, three of these agencies held a news conference in the Labor Department building in Washington to disclose plans to combat the dangers of dibromochloropropane, also known as DBCP. OSHA's Health Standards Director, Grover Wren, said OSHA has issued an emergency temporary standard to cut worker exposure to DBCP. The news conference was opened by OSHA's Deputy Assistant Secretary, Basil Whiting. Agencies represented here today are announcing a series of actions to protect workers and the public from the serious hazards posed by the pesticide DBCP. The Occupational Safety and Health Administration is issuing an emergency temporary standard to limit worker exposure. The Environmental Protection Agency is proposing a suspension on crop application and other uses of this pesticide. And the Food and Drug Administration is launching a food monitoring program to determine if the general public is consuming unsafe amounts of this pesticide. The gentleman here with me will be explaining these actions in greater detail. As the host agency for this press conference, I'm pleased to have my colleagues here and to welcome them on behalf of Dr. Bingham, the uh, Assistant Secretary of Labor for Occupational Safety and Health, who is in Europe at present uh, delivering a scientific paper to an international conference. But she and the other heads of the agencies represented here today have taken a personal interest in the generation of these actions. And I would like to explain very briefly why we feel this is a very unusual and significant cooperative effort. It was just a little over a month ago, on August 2nd, that the heads of the three agencies represented here today, plus the Consumer Product Safety Commission, announced in another joint news conference that they would in the future be working together very closely. The announcement of our actions to protect workers and the public against harmful exposures to DVCP is exactly the kind of action they had in mind at that time. The actions we are jointly announcing today are indeed the result of joint efforts on several fronts. Our respective technical staffs, our legal staffs, and even our public information staffs have labored diligently and long together to coordinate our efforts. I would be remiss if I were not to make special mention, however, of the signal efforts of our own OSHA staff uh, in the health standards area and in the solicitor's office. In only about three weeks from the time of initial awareness of new data indicating a serious national problem, until today, they have produced a complete emergency temporary standard for the exposure of workers to this uh, pesticide. That's an all-time record for quick action in OSHA, particularly when you add the ingredient of close cooperation with the other agencies involved. Our action in dealing with the health problem posed by DBCP is also a clear indication that OSHA head Dr. Bingham and Secretary of Labor Marshall meant what they said in announcing a common sense set of priorities for this agency a few months ago. I'd further like to emphasize that we're not content with this type of approach, important as emergency, stand emergency standards are. We cannot ever hope to cope effectively with the host of hazards confronting the American worker and the workplaces throughout this nation on a substance by substance basis. That is why we are committed to developing broad, generic standards for dealing with whole classes of chemicals and hazards. We are even now working to develop such rules for cancer-causing chemicals and for pesticides. We are forming a committee to examine how to approach and deal with the problem of skin hazards. And we are working further on the standards completion project, which would be a generic standard for work practices and a variety of other uh, elements of protection for workers in relation, in relation to 400 chemicals for which we have uh, threshold limit values. Now I'd like to turn this over to Grover Wren and the panel of experts from the three agencies who will introduce the uh, elements of uh, protective measures that they have undertaken to protect workers and the public. Grover. Thank you, Basil. <coughs> I'd like to briefly summarize the content of OSHA's emergency temporary standard for employee exposure to DBCP, which will appear in the Federal Register tomorrow. I will uh, be glad to answer questions on the individual provisions after the other gentlemen who had an opportunity to summarize the action being taken by their agencies.
first of this standard applies to employees exposed to DBCP in the manufacture and formulation of DBCP and pesticides containing DBCP and related activities such as storage, transportation, disposal, and, and other aspects of handling DBCP in relation to its manufacture and the formulation of pesticides. The emergency standard establishes a permissible exposure limit for DBCP of 10 parts per billion uh, for an eight-hour average workday. The emergency temporary standard also requires that employers notify OSHA within 10 days of the publication of this standard of the location of every workplace in which DBCP is present, every workplace covered by this regulation, and to identify the processes or operations which may result in employee exposure to DBCP, to identify the number of employees, and to describe the current protective measures being employed in that establishment to minimize employee exposure to DBCP. The ETS also provides for a program of monitoring employee exposure, that is the collection of air samples and the subsequent chemical analysis of those samples to determine the fact of exposure and the, the level of employee exposure to the substance. It also requires, as OSHA standards generally do, that employees be apprised of the results of the exposure monitoring and be provided an opportunity to observe the monitoring if they desire. <coughs> the OSHA regulation also provides certain methods of compliance, that is, methods by which employers may reduce employee exposure to DBCP. Those methods generally include the use of engineering controls, work practices, and respirators and protective clothing. And the emergency temporary standard uh, permits a variety of combination of these approaches as may be necessary in each workplace to achieve the required reduction of exposure. The emergency standard also anticipates the issuance of a permanent standard following a public hearing, comments, and review of the record following the issuance of the ETS and requires that employers begin now to plan for the ultimate reduction of employee exposure to EBCP in these establishments solely by means of feasible engineering controls and to begin now to develop a written plan for achieving uh, control by engineering uh, changes. The regulation includes directions for the selection and use of respirators, uh, specific uh, items of protective clothing to uh, prevent possible skin contact with DBCP. It identifies certain personal hygiene and housekeeping practices, again intended to minimize contact and exposure of employees to DBCP. It also provides for a program of medical examination of all workers exposed to DBCP in all of these establishments and identifies a medical protocol that is related to the techniques which have recently been used by physicians in several parts of the industry to identify workers who were affected by exposure. The standard also requires employers to institute a program of employee training so that employees might be apprised of the hazards associated with exposure to DBCP and appropriate work practices and procedures for them to follow to minimize uh, the risk of such exposure. It also includes provisions for signs and labels so that the presence of DBCP will be called to the attention of employees in the workplace to further aid their avoidance of exposure. And finally, the emergency temporary standard provides uh, limited forms of record keeping to document the results of medical examination and monitoring results. That, in brief, is a, a summary of the content of OSHA's emergency temporary standard uh, and, as I mentioned earlier, will serve as the proposal for a permanent standard, probably to be followed by a, uh, an additional publication which would elaborate on some of the provisions as they would be included in a permanent standard. And there will also be a, a hearing 
uh, public hearing and written comments received from interested parties affected by this standard. Thank you. Uh, are there any questions? Is that the EPA, is that normalized is uh, a substitute in some cases uh, for DVCP and is also used uh, there's a thicker scheme again for other purposes as well. That with respect to ethylene dichromide, ASHA has also begun, begun to evaluate the information which is available to us on the possible hazards to workers exposed to ethylene dibromide. <laughs> ethylene dibromide is a substance which, unlike DBCP, uh, for which the use is almost entirely restricted to the manufacturing and formulation of pesticides, only about 10% of our country's production of ethylene dibromide goes into the formulation of pesticides or as pesticide application. The remainder of a large production of ethylene dibromide is uh, utilized as a fuel additive in gasolines and in a variety of other applications in the chemical industry such as, as uh, an intermediate in the formulation of other organic chemicals. ASHA has initiated some workplace inspections in establishments in which ethylene dibromide is used to begin to develop more information on the nature of employee exposures that are occurring. We are also attempting to obtain from uh, industries who have a great deal of experience with ethylene dibromide, the results of employee exposure measurements over the years, and perhaps the results of medical examinations that have been done uh, to try to further assess the possible health consequences to workers exposed to ethylene dibromide. Mr. Duffy, can we look at this data upon which you took the actions to suspend in our part DDCP? Uh, yes, the data are available uh, in our files for inspection by the public and by other interested parties. Uh, with the exception of those data for which trade secrecy has been claimed by the manufacturer. Uh, this is explained in some detail on page 40 of our uh, proposed suspension uh, action, which is uh, available here, I believe. Uh, however, uh, the two companies involved in the basic registrations, uh, Shell and Dow, have claimed trade secrecy for uh, much of the residue data and much of the effects data uh, as of today. It is true that Dow and Shell, the two principal producers of DBCP in this country, have notified EPA and OSHA of their uh, suspension of production, in fact, all activities in their companies related to the manufacture and formulation of DBCP and pesticides containing DBCP. And they have requested the return of these of unused quantities to them. There are foreign sources of DBCP. It is not certain at this time whether or not the results of EPA's re-registration proceeding and other suspension proceedings will eliminate in all cases the use of DBCP as a pesticide. Their actions also would not uh, preclude the continued production of DBCP in this country and formulation of pesticides for export. Uh, I don't know to what extent that will be an attractive business venture uh, after these regulatory actions are taken, but that possibility does exist. Many of the pesticides which have uh, limited use in this country now as a result of EPA's earlier regulatory actions continue to be produced in substantial quantities for export, which would result in the need for a standard for worker protection. Also, in the next few months, even if there were no continued uh, production of DBCP and formulation of pesticides containing DBCP, there will be a variety of activities related to DBCP which may result in exposures of workers to DBCP, such as just rounding up all of the unused stocks, uh, packaging them, returning them to the producers, uh, disposal of that material, and given the 
uh, apparent serious hazards of even short-term exposure to relatively uh, low levels of DBCP, OSHA considered it appropriate to proceed with the issuance of the emergency standard since there is no regulation presently of either agency that would apply uh, specifically to worker exposure to DBCP. How long before OSHA might have a generic standard for pesticides and can you give some specifics as to how it would, would work? We are presently working together with the National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health and with EPA in the development of a so-called generic standard for worker exposure to pesticides in the manufacture and formulation of pesticides. We anticipate being able to issue a proposed regulation uh, very early in 1978. There are a variety of studies underway necessary to support that regulatory activity. It would be a very broad uh, scope regulation covering the 1,400 pesticides and uh, associated inerts that I described earlier in some uh, 4,000 manufacturers and formulators establishments, I think more than 7,000 establishments, and ultimately including the more than 35,000 registered products that result from that manufacture and formulation activity. The regulation would include uh, provisions for routine medical examination of exposed workers, specific work practices, uh, hygiene facilities, that is protective clothing and where skin contact presented a serious hazard, facilities for, for washing and showering and change rooms for leaving behind the contaminated clothing and leaving the, uh, the workers on clothing in there during the day. Uh, a variety of provisions which would comport with good industrial hygiene practice and good occupational medical practice throughout much of industry today, but which appears to be strikingly absent from uh, much of the pesticide manufacturing and formulation operations, even though these materials by their very nature are produced for the reasons that they kill or alter life forms. So the regulation we have in mind is one uh, of very broad application and it would serve to provide for day-to-day -day worker protection as an alternative to continuing down the road of one-by-one regulation through a whole list of 1,400 or more substances. There will follow, I indicated that in early 1978 we would hope to issue the notice of proposed rulemaking. There would follow then a period of public comment, a public hearing, evaluation of the record, uh, as is customarily the case with the administrative rulemaking process. And at this time I'm not able to predict confidently when we would be in a position to issue the final standard, but we would certainly uh, expect to do so and hope to do so during calendar year 1978. And I might add that while much of the necessary activity to support this kind of rulemaking and develop the necessary evidence to sustain a final decision can't be compressed a great deal, uh, the recent events of Kepon, Leptophos, Diethyl, Stilbestrol, and now DBCP certainly uh, add to Asha's sense of urgency about the issuance of a generic pesticide standard. Over, I'd like to ask you if, uh, how you are going to handle situations where workers are overexposed and uh, on the basis of medical examination, what happens to them? I don't see it in the standards as here. I believe, George, you referred to the issue that has arisen in several of the other uh, health standards which OSHA is presently considering and has issued in the past, and that is uh, what, what action must an employer take or may an employer take when it is determined that an employee is ill as a result of exposure to a toxic substance such as DBCP in the workplace. The, the question of whether that employee should be removed from further exposure to the substance if in the opinion of the physicians and the employer further exposure would constitute increased risk to that employee of further uh, damage to his health. And if that employee is removed, 
what consequences might the employee suffer in terms of loss of earnings, uh, loss of employment. The emergency temporary standard which we have here uh, does not specifically address that issue as is the case with uh, recent OSHA regulations. However, the agency has announced its intentions uh, to move in the very near future to consider uh, this issue in the context of other ongoing permanent health standards proceedings, and I would anticipate that, that there would be a possibility that would be treated in the permanent standard issued for DBCP. But uh, it is, there is no specific provision made in the emergency temporary standard for uh, the transfer of employees found to be affected by exposure to DBCP uh, to other employment or, or similar forms of protection. Can you estimate how long it will take for a permanent standard for DBCP? The Occupational Safety and Health Act uh, in providing for the issuance of an emergency temporary standard also provides that that the issuance of the emergency standard constitutes a proposal for the issuance of a final standard and suggests that that should be completed within six months after the issuance of the ETS. And that would be our goal. <coughs> the problem is such that we can expect in the future as new studies come out that there will be new toxic substances of the month that will uh, merit accelerated actions, catch-up actions such as this. The uh, the point of your question indicates that, uh, again, the need in Asha's experience to move on a broader front than simply a substance-by-substance -substance basis. I think we are not in a position uniquely different from that of EPA in, in realistically expecting the continued barrage of results of uh, new studies and more highly refined studies, more carefully conducted studies, which uh, illustrate hazards associated with exposure to substances which were not known five years ago, ten years ago, or not well recognized. And it's very difficult to respond to those systematically on a one-by-one -one basis. And that is the fundamental reason that ASHA is proceeding. Though we can never ignore the DBCPs as they come along, we're trying to lay a broader foundation of regulation through the generic standards, and as well in the cancer area, to advance a framework for evaluating, uh, we call it our cancer policy, uh, which we will be issuing in the next few weeks, and that will provide or propose to provide a framework for evaluating the new evidence of animal studies and human experience as it comes forward to, to expedite and, and make more orderly the response to those and regulation of employee exposures to uh, such substances in the workplace. the exposure standard, if I understand correctly, you're approving a level of exposure that's ten times higher than the Chemical Workers Union had requested. What is the indication that, that ten parts per billion is safe? There is no indication, there is no proof that ten parts per billion or in fact any uh, numerical standard is safe. And ASHA's practice has been in setting numerical standards for substances which pose a carcinogenic risk or uh, for which it is otherwise impossible to derive a threshold or no effect level or a safe level to presume for regulatory purposes that no safe level exists. The numerical standard, as in this case then, is predicated on considerations of feasibility. That is, how, uh, how low can employee exposure in the affected industries be reduced, and in this case, in the context of the six months of an emergency temporary standard. And the 10 parts per billion is derived from considerations such as the, uh, the available technology for uh, sampling and analyzing employee exposures to DBCP in the workplace, the availability of a, a variety of means of protection such as engineering controls, work practices, and respirators, and the recognition that effects of sterility have been seen in workers whose exposure is reported by Dow, Shell, and Occidental to have been in the range of 100 to 600 parts per billion, and some of those workers had uh, exposures for only brief periods of time, meaning 
a few months to a couple of years at those relatively low levels of exposure. So there was clearly a need to establish a numerical standard well below the levels at which exposure is said to have taken place in recent years. And yet, at the same time, in light of the immediate effective date of the standard and the means for measurement and means of protection uh, to set the numerical standard uh, on the basis of uh, feasibility. Thank you.